Nick, it has been a few months. It really uh, <laughs> for you, and it, you know, I have this. It has been that amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had this discussion a couple times this weekend randomly with people about how the nice thing about Comic Con is that. Yeah, we can do all our jobs online. Yeah, we can stay connected with people through various whatever. But there's nothing like sitting in a room with a human being and just talking to them and hearing what they have to say and hearing what they have to do. Um, you know, few things more terrifying. Few <laughs> things more terrifying. <laughs> I mean, has it? I mean, the Hydra Cap storyline of Cap Steve Rogers Cap America has hit, and it's been ups and downs and lefts and rights and accusations and, and or whatever else. <laughs> Do you find that it's a different flavor of interaction you get with the readers when you come to something like this? Or are, are, are people just being like, death and expenser? It is, it never fails. And I was genuinely curious this time because I figured if ever the rule was gonna be broken, it would be on this. But just like every other time, uh, for all the anger and fury on the internet, for whatever reason, when you're in person and in the flesh, yeah. everybody is super sweet, super <laughs> nice. The only thing I really heard today is just a bunch of people saying, I'm so sorry that you have to deal with that. I'm so <laughs> sorry, you know, and I'm like, I know that you're probably secretly on Twitter saying you hate me, but I appreciate uh, you being so nice. So no, 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 actually, I mean, people are, are have been really fantastic here. So that's that's kind of fun to, to, to get to, you know, meet actual people and have them say nice things. Yeah. It's been so <laughs> interesting to see not just the, the Hydra Cap reaction type stuff, but you're writing two Captain America books right now, and the Sam book and the Steve book are different in so many ways. And I think the response to both of those books are different, even though ultimately it's all going to tell one story. I mean, how different, when you sit down and you're writing about Sam, how different does that feel, not just because you're writing a different character, but because you want maybe the tone of that book to feel a little different, you want the world that he's in to, to be just a little left of where the Steve book is. Yeah, they are. They're, they're, both books are very much their own thing, and, and the approaches to, to both are completely different, really. Uh, it's funny, because when the Sam book came out, you know, the Sam book was supposed to be the controversial one, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, now that seems like such a simpler time when it was, you know, just a, just a few right-wing websites that were mad at me, but... Uh, you know, with Sam, we've, we, we're well into a story now of what happens if you're Captain America and you try to get down in the muck a bit. You know, you take positions, you, you, you fight unpopular fights. Uh, that's really at the core of the Sam book. Uh, and, you know, we wanted to make sure when the plan involving Steve came into play that we didn't lose that from Sam's book, that, that uh, you know, it didn't just become reacting and responding to Steve's story. We wanted to make sure that uh, Sam continued on that same narrative trajectory. It was really interesting, out of all the stuff I read, uh, as, you know, the Steve book had launched and, and hot takes and warm takes and cold <laughs> takes or whatever, um, I think the smartest thing I read, perhaps unsurprisingly, was an old Jack Kirby quote, and I'm going to <laughs> murder it now, but somebody kind of asked him about, you know, what do you feel like you write? And I think he had said something along the lines of, I feel like what I, I write is real life and that, you know, you've got to bring whatever you think, whatever you're passionate about, whatever your opinion is, whatever your take on the world is, as an artist, it's your job to bring that to the page and that's, that's all you're supposed to do, you know? And um, obviously we live in very strange times that have nothing to do with Captain America or comic books at all. But how do you feel the story of uh, Steve having his reality altered to make him a, a Hydra sleeper agent, I mean, what does that tap into about America today for you? Well, it's really, it's an interesting question because what people forget is, you know, I pitched this story well over a year ago. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the, the country is in a very different place now than it was when uh, we were first working out the details of this. So yeah. it's funny when people kind of look at the story and say, well, this is obviously a commentary on X or, yeah. or you know, uh, this is, you know, uh, him injecting his opinion on Y. And I'm like, those things didn't even exist <laughs> when I came up with this. Uh, it's interesting to me, though, how in some ways the story has ended up being quite prescient. Um, that I, I think that the, the interesting questions to ask about this story are really 
what happens when people feel uh, like they've lost faith in institutions? What, what happens when people feel uh, like, uh, you know, their sense of idealism is gone? Um, and the, the, the trust that they have in the people who have said that they're there to protect them erodes. Um, who thrives in that kind of environment, you know? Who prospers? Um, that's, that's really uh, the, the, the kernel of the story. And, and um, I think that as it plays out more, as, as we get farther in, I think the parallels to what's around us are gonna be pretty apparent. Well, um, you guys announced this weekend that you're going to be working on a one-shot that's going to be going on through the Civil War II, the, the Oath, uh, which is going to be the next phase of Steve's story and kind of bring all the stuff that's been happening in that book into the Marvel Universe in a way. And it, it's weird because it reminds me of the first Civil War and Ed's run. I think tonally, in terms of what elements of Captain America's story you guys are focusing on, you and Ed are, it did very kind of different sure. takes. But Ed was doing Captain America kind of alongside the first Civil War. And then because of that, he was able to you know, do the death of Steve and do some stuff like that, but not really have it feel like encroach too much on what he's doing. And I feel like you're in a similar kind of space where there's this giant event and you're like, okay, I've got one piece to throw into the fire, but then I get to keep on my own track. Is that what it feels like to you? It's, it's really a strange thing because I wish I could say that we planned it all <laughs> that way, uh, you know, um, but uh, in terms of, of Civil War II, these, these two stories are very much uh, going to collide with one another, that they're very much uh, going to dovetail. So uh, things that seem separate are yeah. very much not. And as Civil War II goes on, you're going to see more of that. Uh, and the same in Steve Rogers' Captain America, that that's, as we go into our Civil War tie-ins, they're, they're more than tie-ins, you know, that they're, they're pretty integral pieces to the overall puzzle. And so, uh, so yeah, these two stories are really going to intermix and intermingle uh, in, in very much uh, the same way that, uh, you know, the first Civil War did with the death of Captain America story. Um, the other thing that I would say about that is just, as much hype and discussion or whatever the reveal generated, I still don't think that the average reader has grasped the scope of the story yet. Okay. Uh, they think of it still as a Captain America story. Um, that's, that's, that's great because I'm writing the Captain America title, but yeah. uh, the reality is that the story is going to end up being much, much bigger than that. and so. Uh, the Oath is really where we start to set the stage for that. The Oath is where uh, my hope is that when people are done with it, they start to see the magnitude of, of what's occurring and start to see how all of these things fit together. Yeah. It's interesting, you know, we recently did a thing with Tom Brevoort as this all going on and he was talking about the, the pace of modern superhero comics now is heightened, you know, I mean, it, it, it seems like you know, a few years ago, if you were doing a story where Steve Rogers' reality was rewritten, he was a Hydra agent, you wouldn't have ended issue one on Hail Hydra, and then issue two has been like, the cards, you know? I mean, like, it definitely is a story, but I feel like while we're not in the period anymore where one person and one artist work on a book together for 45 issues straight or whatever, you've got these two ongoing books, you've got the Pleasant Hill uh, across if you got a one-shot. I mean, it feels like you get to tell a large amount of story, but it just happens faster and quicker. You know, I really noticed that. Uh, you know, um, I was talking to Jonathan Hickman once about his Avengers run, and I forget how many issues that ended up being. It was actually a pretty compressed amount of time. Yeah. But because of the accelerated shipping, because he did New Avengers and Infinity and Secret Wars, it ended up being this massive number of issues over a very <laughs> short period of time. And I think you're starting to see see more of that. That. Actually, you know, uh, my cap run is, is already, you know, one of the longest runs that I've done if I've combined Every book various decided to, yeah, books. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's kind of how, uh, how I think of it. I think of it as, as sort of all one run. And so, yeah, it's just an interesting way that the delivery has changed. Uh, I think that some of that is just a response to, uh, you know, we had an era of... Uh, stories that were very much written for trades and collections and mm -hmm. and so they were you know the beats were kind of spread across six issues then you had some sort of pushback on that and 
Uh, now I think you're starting to see writers try to come up with creative ways to still tell really big stories, but do it in shorter periods of time where folks feel like things are moving and things are happening a little faster. Well, I want to talk about um, your creator on stuff, your image stuff. Um, the Fix is one of those books where I feel like, uh, maybe not intentionally by you guys, but no way else to say it, is tailor-made to be someone's favorite comic book. You know, like certain series come out and you're like, oh, I could see myself enjoying that. Or yeah, a lot of people might pick that up. But I feel like the people who are finding the specific tone that you and Steve bring and, and just the little bits and pieces that you just started to play with in that book and people will be like, I want to buy this as soon as the next one comes out. You know, I mean, I know it, it was like a lot of stuff going on as the launch happened, but you guys have done a couple, multiple printings of the first issue now. I mean, have you started friends. to feel the, the, the fan base, the kind of people that were following Superior Foes coming and, and looking at the fix in that same way? Absolutely. We were really uh, excited to get to, to get to the fix. We, we decided that we were doing it as Superior Foes was wrapping up and, and we, were, we were pretty fired up about it. Uh, we were actually a little disappointed initially. The, 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 the first numbers that came in, we thought, oh, we're, we're, we think more people want to yeah, read it than yeah. that. Uh, and yeah, now we're on uh, the fifth printing of the first issue. So, uh, and the, you know, the fourth printing of the second one. So it's, it's, it just keeps going back to press because the, 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 the additional prints really do just keep selling out. So, um, you know, clearly there was a demand for us to, to keep telling stories together, and that's, that's always really rewarding. Um, in terms of the, you know, the style, we wanted to take what we had done on, on Foes, uh, which had clearly struck a chord with a certain audience, and, and you know, I still, even today and at, at this show, you know, uh, hear nice things about that book. It's yeah. just one that kind of follows me around. So. Uh, we wanted to do that, but you know the nice thing about working at Image is obviously you have a lot more freedom. Uh, you know, there's there's not the sort of standards and practices uh, <laughs> that you might run into, uh, you know, uh, at another company. So, uh, you know, we got to we got to do sort of the rawest, darkest, meanest version of, of this kind of comedy, and that's it's it's, it's been a lot of fun. And it's it's funny because if you read Morning Glories, I mean Morning Glories has always been this big, expansive, in some ways frightening story, but there's a lot of humor in those characters. And I don't think even folks who've been reading your books from early on would say, uh, Nick's a comedy writer. You know, Nick sure. writes funny stuff, but I mean, I guess, do you have a black humor streak in you? Or is there, is there certain things you look for as inspiration, like this is the kind of stuff I want to be able to do? Yeah, I, I, I enjoy writing this stuff. It's by far the most challenging stuff yeah. to write. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a cliche for writers to say comedy is hardest, but it really, really is. <laughs> it's it's cliche for a reason. So, uh, you know, the book is is definitely the hardest to write. It's the one that I dread writing the most because yeah. you know I know it's going to exhaust me when I sit down to do it. Um, but you know, it, it's also very rare that I've that I've written things that resonate quite like this. You know, people really do uh, get very very excited about the book. It's it's gotten the reviews have been phenomenal, and yeah, we keep going back to press. So. Seems like it's working.